Hello, my name is Eric Reiner. I am a customer engineer at Soda. And we're gonna spend the next few minutes going through just how quickly you can get started running data quality checks within a Databricks notebook. First and foremost, if you do not have a Soda Cloud account set up, feel free to head over to soda.io and start a trial. You'll fill out a short form and then your instance will be up within minutes. Once your instance is up, then we're gonna go ahead and import the notebook that is part of this video. And so in this case, go ahead and import it to any workspace, right? And we're gonna go through exactly what we're doing here in just a moment. But first, let's go ahead and head over to your cloud account and configure just a couple of things. The first thing we wanna do is create an attribute and so an attribute in Soda's context is like metadata of your checks or data sets. So they play a huge role in filtering and reporting. So things like data domains and dimensions and so on um, become very important uh, in addition to routing your alerts. So leveraging the attribute values to determine exactly where your alerts go. In our case, we're gonna create a new one and we're going to call this check explanation. So basically, why is it we have a particular check in place and what is it doing? And so the resource type here is going to be applied to a check. And then the type here is going to be text value. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then the sec second thing you're going to want to do is go generate some API keys. And so you're going to do that by going to profile and head over to API keys and simply click on the plus symbol here and generate a set of API keys. Go ahead and copy those values and then head back over to your notebook. And so now we'll focus a bit on exactly what we're doing here in the notebook. So first and foremost, you're gonna need to install the Soda package, specifically the SodaSpark DF package. This is something that you can install on a per notebook basis, or you can install it as part of the cluster. So basically when that cluster starts up, it is always there. And then we're gonna go ahead and move down here and configure uh, just a few things. So the first thing, your API keys that you copied, we're gonna go ahead and paste them in here. In my example, I've actually got them stored within Databricks secrets. So I'll go ahead and paste those in here. And then your host, so depending on where you set up the cloud instance, either in US or Europe, will determine your host. So in my case, I have a Europe instance. If it's going to be a US instance, it would be cloud.us.soda.io. And then the DF view. So basically, how should this be represented within the Soda Cloud UI? And so this is gonna be the actual data set name. This is user defined. You can name it what you want. The data source name here, in this case, Databricks sample table, and then the scan definition name. So these are all user defined. You'll see these values within the Soda Cloud UI. And then the actual uh, data frame that we're creating based off of the sample uh, table within Databricks for which everyone should have access in the event that you don't. Um, we'll go through and talk about what you could adjust. So basically whatever you do have access to, feel free to load into a data frame and then you can change the checks just a little bit um, and then you can run it. In this case, again, this is something that everyone should have access to. And in this example, I've got two here. The first one we're gonna focus on is um, no filtering. So basically I'm gonna load the entire table, which is about 1.6 billion rows into a data frame. And then we'll move on and we'll actually apply a filter here in just a moment. And then everything down below is where we're going to begin executing our checks. So we're gonna create a scan object here. And then what is it we're actually going to check here? So in this case, you're seeing the actual checks here. So the SOTA CL language uh, within this notebook. Um, of course, you know many customers will actually have these particular checks in a YAML file um, for which the notebook can access. And in that example, of course, you can use variables. You can use a bit more, reuse these checks, right? But in this case, for this exercise, I've outlined them here. So exactly what are we doing? As I go through that, let me first execute this particular notebook. All right, so the first thing I'm doing here is I want to make sure that there are 
rows in this table, right? So remember that attribute we created called check explanation. This gives you the opportunity opportunity to get very detailed in exactly what you're doing. Um, freshness, I want to make sure I'm dealing with the latest version, so that it has to be within the last 30 days. Um, I want to make sure here with passenger count that there are no missing values. Um, the fare amount, so the trip cost, I want to make sure that there's less than 5% overall null values in the table. And then invalid pickup dates and times. So basically, I want to make sure that there are no invalid dates and times. And you'll notice in this case, I'm using a SQL query. So alongside the SOTA CL checks that I outlined up above here, you can also use SQL directly, in which case you can see I've created a query. And then the same thing down here. So I want to make sure that the trip cost is a positive number when there are passengers and a trip distance has been recorded. And so you can see here, here's my actual query. And then I'm also doing some sampling. And so basically this means that I'm sending a sample size of about 100 records to the Soto Cloud UI. This is helpful for those that might want to create some checks or just simply look at the data. This is by all means optional. You can simply remove this block if you wanted. And so then as I scroll down here, um, a couple other things to point out that we do have the scan assert no checks fail in addition to scan assert no error logs. So this simply means that based on any failure, I don't want any subsequent task to be executed. So you can think of this as, okay, based on these, the critical nature of these particular checks, if these all pass, then I'll move on to a second set of checks as an example or some other task. And so because this has finished executing, took about a minute. Keeping in mind, this particular sample table is 1.6 billion rows. It completed pretty quickly. You'll see that three of my six checks have passed. So in this case, total rows should be greater than zero. Excellent. Latest load within 30 days passed. That's great. And then missing fair amount should not exceed 5%. I do have three checks that did fail. So in this case, I can see that there are some invalid pickup dates and times. Um, this trip cost should be a positive number when passenger and trip distance is recorded. You can see here, we've got 34,000 records failing that. And then no missing values in passenger count, right? So this information is then sent to the SOTA Cloud UI. In the event that you want to test, for example, maybe you're testing out some checks, we do have the option of setting this to local. So that just means that nothing will be sent to the cloud right away as you're testing. You can uncomment that. And then if you needed to diagnose some challenges or issues you're having, um, you can go ahead and set the scan to verbose, which then the output will give you much more detail as to exactly what's happening. So now we're going to head over to the SOTA cloud environment. And when I look at data sets here, we should now see that data set New York City Taxi SOTA example. Remember the name that you're seeing here was defined in the notebook. We'll go ahead and jump into this. And so right away, um, you'll see chat coverage. You know, right now this has not been updated because we just created this. Um, but after time, you'll see the overall check coverage here in addition to the health score. Now, if we look at the checks, you'll see, as we saw in the output in the notebook, three are passing, three are failing. So the first one we'll jump into is this invalid pickup dates and times. When I look at this particular check, you'll see that I am sending failed rows to Soda Cloud. All right, so in this example, you can see 2026, right? These are future dates. And so, this alone is also going to throw my freshness check off. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But one thing to mention here is that you do obviously have the option of sending failed records to the SOTA cloud. Um, but then, you know, based on the sensitivity of the data, right, you can just simply route it to a table within your environment um, and then provide a link up here for the end user to click on, right? There's lots of options here. And that's all outlined in docs.soda.io. Now, if we go back and look at another check here, specifically that freshness one. So this one did pass, but notice the number here. It's a negative number. So what does that mean, right? Well, based on those invalid pickup dates times, you can see that there were future dates there. So if I look at this, again, everything is passed, but it is a negative number. So not an ideal state, right? So if we jump back into notebook, 
you know, typically you're not going to run these checks on the overall table, perhaps maybe a one-time thing, but then maybe you're going to apply a filter going forward, right? You want to just run this on the latest and greatest. So in this case, as mentioned earlier, um, I've gone ahead and applied a filter here. So we'll run this again and see the value of those checks. In this case, I just want to analyze the data for uh, 2020, and that's it. So just everything for 2020. So we'll go ahead and execute this. Something to point out, because there are failures here, right? what happens? Who was alerted? How was that set up? So within Soda, and we'll jump back to these checks in just a moment, under organization settings, you can set up your integrations. Um, of course, Slack is supported, Teams, anything that supports a webhook will support. In this case, I've already set up Slack. You might wonder what that looks like within Slack itself. And so here's a quick example. You'll see in this case, those are the three checks that failed alongside a link. And then we just executed, so more alerts came in. Um, we do support email by default as well. So in this case, you can see I was sent an email here, and then I have a link going back into the Soto Cloud UI where then I can analyze exactly what's going on. And if we go back here, We'll see the output. This has finished. Now the data is a little different here. One, we applied that filter, um, but two, we only have two checks failing. So four of them are now passing. And so missing fair amount, no missing values in passenger count, invalid pickup dates and times that have passed. So in the year 2020, based on my filter, there are no future dates right, in the particular uh, segment. And then the two that are failing here, trip cost should be positive and then the latest load within 30 days. So this was, this is my freshness check. This was passing, but now it is failing. So if we go back here to the data sets and we ran that again. And so you'll see here, latest load within 30 days, we're about 1300 days old. But naturally, of course, I just applied a filter for 2020. There's nothing more recent than that in that particular sample. Now, this is the most basic sort of setup. Uh, leveraging soda within a Databricks notebook. Um, you can get a bit more creative here, um, especially when it comes to pipelines within soda. Of course, you can schedule them. Um, you can do just a ton of things. Um, but the idea here was to just show how quickly you can get started. Uh, for more information, um, feel free to head over to docs.soda.io, where you can get into very uh, good detail um, to specific use cases, including within Databricks. And in the event that you don't have access to this particular sample table um, that Databricks does provide, right, you can simply load up your own, but keeping in mind in these checks, I'm calling out specific column names. So you could one, just delete these checks or just create new ones, but just keep in mind that these checks wouldn't execute except for this row count check. Um, just based on the fact that I am calling out specific column names here. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Again, this is how quickly you can get started leveraging Soda within your Databricks environment. Thank you.